So I've been eager to make a video like this for quite some time. I just had to wait for the job to be able to do it. Now what we're going to do here today, we're going to be swapping out this old jet pump system. And we're going to be updating it to a new submersible system. Luckily everything is out here in the pump house. We have our wire, which is our power to our pump. And we have our water feed to the house. So what we have to do is pull out this double line jet pump, get rid of all this mess. And the biggest problem that I see is we only have like five or six foot of pull distance. So we're going to have to pull both of these lines at the same time to the roof, lock it off in the pump dog, cut it, and repeat the process probably 25 times. All right, so I got the uh, old jet pump get up all pulled out. The tank was bad. You can tell it's still spraying water out the bottom. beating a hammer for 12 minutes. Wow, that's heavy. Mm -hmm. That is very, very, very heavy. Sure as hell. Can you see them cutters? Them right there is already dangling. It is because it's not, we're not holding it by right, the hook. We can't. That's yeah. the problem. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, shit. It ain't a, <laughs> it ain't a commercial system. Mm -hmm. All right, boom, we're done. Mm -hmm. That's it. I didn't mean to put my weight down. Screwdriver got on the floor. No, this, I mean, this thing has to sit yeah. perfectly on the well. We're working really high off the ground here, too, which is kind of nuts. Are you able to cut the breaker off for this whole building? Let's go ahead and cut the breaker off because we're going to get everything wet. Now Justin, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna pull. What we'll do is, uh, yeah, there you go. Just give it a little tuck. All right. Uh -huh. That's it. They just don't want to cut. Yeah. It just does not want to cut. What's the year on that? Probably. I swear it says 1970. Yeah, that's what I, I wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me they put this pump in and didn't even change the uh whatever the thing is at the bottom either. Yeah, right. I think that pipe is from 1970. <laughs> all right, let's see here. That's all of our pieces. So we got one, two, three couplings. So that would be 60 foot deep. And then this is what was at the bottom. It's amazing that that check valve was still working, being that it was that old. Barely working. Hey, kitty cat, what you doing? How are you? You're cute. Okay, I'm gonna go get the uh, tape measure. We're gonna measure the depth of the well. And then once we measure the depth of the well, y'all can put a new pump system together. Okay, I'm gonna figure out how deep this thing is. Thirty-four foot to water. There it is. Yeah, I thought it felt like it. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're a hundred and five foot deep. Okay. So Mike, let's uh, we're gonna put the pump in at eighty foot. Know right. the depth of the well. We're gonna go ahead and put some chlorine in the well to sanitize it. I can almost guarantee this well probably hadn't had bleach or chlorine in it for a few decades. <sighs> Put half a bag in it. We're gonna stir up a whole lot of iron when we light this thing up. 
Okay, well Justin's going ahead. He's putting a new pump in. We're going to be using a, uh, that's a 115 volt submersible pump. We're going to be putting it in. Since the well is 105 foot, we're going to put the pump in somewhere between 80 and 85. Uh, that way it'll give us a little bit extra wire to go to um, the pressure switch. Now I'm going to take you inside the pump house and show you the plan. So I haven't really figured out where I want to mount the bladder tank yet um, to set it as far as you know the ground goes. Um, I will probably put it on the block to keep it up off the floor a little bit. Um, but since this pipe here is our like outgoing pipe to the house, um, we have to keep that into a factor to try to keep the plumbing neat. Um, I, I talked to the homeowner, he wants to put a filter in, so we're gonna put this whole house filter we got to mount it on the wall so in order to mount it on the wall i have to get a two by four and span the two by four here mount it to the stud and then mount the filter onto it and then tie my plumbing into it to the tank and then out of the tank down here to the outgoing pipe so there's a few things that i have to look at um to try to figure out the best flow for the plumbing and then um, before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and clean up all this mess of uh, plumbing and old stuff in the floor. Good deal. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm just going to go ahead and sink the rest of those screws in. And then we can start plumbing this thing up. And then when, uh, once I get this side plumbed up, my electrical done, and then we can go ahead and drop the well pump in the well. Now that I got the filter all mounted, go ahead and we're going to hook up his wires. So this was the wire that originally went to his uh, pressure switch on the jet pump. This is 115 volt, so we need to label it all accordingly. Um, typically, due to code, you take the white wire and you mark it black, but on this, because it's 115 volt, we're not going to mark it black. And then I'm going to take a Sharpie and I'm going to write on the tank that the system is 115 volt. That way in the future, if any service technician comes here, they try to do a test or an amp draw or whatever, they know the amp draws that are associated with a 115 volt pump versus a 230 volt pump. If you would, grab the well seal and just hold on to it. And I'm going to grab the pump and we'll put it in. Wipe all that stuff off of it. Get it nice and clean. I don't think I need the wheels, dude. It's just going to be too easy to drop this thing in without it. Pine needle. Go ahead and let it twist. There you go. Yep. Bingo. Get that pine needle off there. Beautiful. Bam. Done. D U N done. All right, now all I got to do is go out, go go down, and then go into there with some PVC. So, Mike, I need a stick of PVC. All right, so we went ahead and plumbed that up. Got it coming out of the well. 90 down, going over into the bladder tank, up and out, through a valve, into the filter. Next step is we got to come out of the filter. We're going to bring basically just three-quarter inch coil pecs, and we're going to coil it down and around kind of just follow the wall and I got to make a transition piece to tie into the three quarter inch black roll. I also have to get some flexible conduit, stick it in to here and then run it over into the pressure switch. So that's what we're going to work on next. So this is going to be my transition. It's got a uh, three quarter inch PEX female that we're going to put on a three quarter inch black roll male. <clears throat> 
that keeps any plastic out of it and it allows the metals to be similar so you don't have to worry about any type of corrosion we're going to slip this into there like so and we're going to adapt over to our PEX and run that over to our filter I've got the filter basically completely done here I had to use coil PEX because that was all that I had left on the truck and I went ahead and made my conversion over right here heated the pipe up to give it that nice little curve that nice little bend and uh, it's all done last thing is I gotta get this strip this out cut it to the proper length and get my flex conduit over there and we're gonna put this wire through the conduit and run it into the switch and then will be time to turn the system on well the system is completed I got the gray conduit we went ahead and caulked it into the hole here followed all the way down into the switch so that's all good to go went ahead and labeled it 115 volt pump at 85 foot so anybody in the future will know where it's at filters all set ready to go um, if you would go turn the power back on and then uh, yeah once he turns the power back on I'll flip the switch on and we'll uh, we'll flow some water because I'm sure uh, we stirred up all that red iron inside the well so we need to go ahead and flush that off before we leave tighten the well seal just a smidge typically you don't have a problem with well seals jumping unless you have the pump shallow since this one's only in there at 85 foot I don't want it jumping and breaking any of my plumbing I had talked with the homeowner um, because we're out here in a pump house he's gonna get himself a little thermostatically controlled heater we're gonna plumb that up and uh, plug it into one of the electrical outlets kind of just set it here in the floor you set it for 45 degrees and it only comes on once it gets to 45 degrees inside of this building that way it'll prevent any of this stuff from freezing which besides that everything else in here is pretty much well insulated but the wind today is horrendous the weatherman lied to us he said that the wind was gonna subside around lunchtime and it is now 1:30 and the wind is probably i don't know 20 30 40 miles an hour out there it is really really bad so it is a blessing that we are inside this pump house okay <clears throat> i'm sure he's probably gotten to the point yep all right light goes pumps on yeah oh bladder pop i'm not going to send it through the filter until we flush this system for at least 15 minutes Okay, probably give us a little bit of clear water at first. That's just whatever's trapped in the hose. And then I, uh, I expect that to turn quite brown. There it goes. Sometimes you gotta know what you're talking about. <laughs> All right, we're gonna let that run till it gets clear or till it runs out. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and clean everything up. All right, we got everything loaded up in the back of the truck. Any trash we created, we're gonna bring with us. That was some, that was some nasty stuff. You can look at the color of that pipe and tell how bad the iron is in that well. Yeah, we've been pumping it for about 20 minutes, and the color of the water has gotten better. It's still got a slight little tinge to it, but we, this well has never been flowed this much in its entire life. Now that it's got a submersible pump in it, we can really flush it. But uh, it flowed pretty brown for about 15 or 20 minutes. And then uh, within the last minute or so, it really made a, a big drastic turnaround. And uh, you can really tell that it's getting clearer. So I told the homeowner just to let it run. And um, he's going to let it run for another 30 minutes to an hour. And hopefully the well's only 105 foot deep with a pump at 85 foot. So... It's not going to take it that long for this system to um, flush itself out and become clear. Prior to this, he didn't really have an issue because he had the jet pump. There wasn't anything down there with that amount of velocity to flow that much water. Um, and a submersible pump, it likes to beat and bang around on the sidewalls of the well, knock loose any, any um, you know iron buildup or whatnot. Now we're really flushing the veins out. But um, prior to this, he never had any filter system. So if he didn't have a filter prior to this, he didn't really have a problem. 
But other than that, system system looks pretty good. Yeah, that's a two inch fan now. Yeah, he got a lot of insulation in here. Mm -hmm. It really looks good. Now he's got a system that that looks a little bit better than that 1978 model. Mm -hmm. Cool. I kind of want to do a shop this way and then put 